Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. In case you're new here, my name is Dave. May the Schwartz be with you. And I wanted to do a quick video just talking about my journey into vinyl and how I was totally against it. And now with arms wide open, bring it in, bring in all the vinyl love. <laughs> um, so I just wanted to kind of explain a little bit about my journey and hopefully you guys can relate if you're into records as well. And let me know what you think in the comments down below. And of course, subscribe if you haven't joined the Schwartz Force yet. I missed yesterday. I didn't realize, you know, May the 4th and then May the Schwartz, like, I completely missed the opportunity. So next year, next year I'll get it. Uh, but real quick, before we get into it, let's do a wristwatch check. So this is actually a watch I just got today. I'm giving it some wrist time before I do a review, but it will be coming out. And this is a Timex, um, I guess like a vintage I've never heard of these watches before. I, I came across it randomly. I really like the look of this one, and I'll, I'll talk more about that when that video comes out, so make sure you stay tuned for that. But today, I'm just going to go over my journey with vinyl and the progression of how it came to be. So let's get started. Now, vinyl, I thought, was one of those hipster things. I was against it. Once I heard it was making a comeback, I'm like, dude, that's lame. Like, it's old technology. It sucks. And for the most part, yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of cons with vinyl records as far as, like, popping, skipping, scratching, static. Um, it just, they're fragile. They warp. They're, it versus, like, CDs and then even digital, like, audio. You could just go to YouTube and listen to it. Why the heck would you spend... 10, 20, 30, 100, 300 dollars on a vinyl record. And so I thought that it was just dumb and the people who were into it were just as dumb uh, for, you know, kind of buying into the hype. Uh, what ended up happening is my grandpa gave me this record player here along with a, um, a receiver, an audio receiver. And so he was like, here, take these. I don't use them, I don't play them. So I was like, all right, grandpa, I'll, I'll check it out. And it is a Kenwood, real inexpensive, like super cheap belt driven turntable. It's a model numbers KD291R. And for the most part, it's not customizable. Or you can't really change anything on here other than the uh, platter kind of mat. So there's this felt one and then this rubber one that I put on there. Um, it does have a little 45 adapter, so that's kind of cool. The tone arm is stationary. The stylus is like super cheap. Um, you can't change anything on it. The tone arm is just a straight arm and you really can't modify anything outside of that. I guess you could throw a different stylus that fits this turntable, but you're not really going to be able to get a whole lot of options out there. And so this is what got me like into records again, I guess, just giving them a, tr a shot. And as to be expected, I hooked everything up and this is like, you can't even change out the RCA cables on this. Like you couldn't replace these with something nicer, with better contact, like gold tipped, you know, gold plated, can't do it. It's all stationary. So I play a record, it sounds like crap. <laughs> um, I try to tweak it a bit and play another record. It sounds okay, but the static, the sound quality, it was just terrible. And so that's what kind of got me into researching. Okay, well, how can I make these records sound as good as they're gonna sound. And that opened the floodgates, down the rabbit hole we go, because then I started looking into audiophile setups and what people do and why they're so into, you know, why, if this is what I'm experiencing, how is it that other people are like spending big money on records and their setup and their sound? And that's what started my whole journey. So I came across on YouTube, of course, like just going through the rabbit hole, uh, came across Michael Fremer, who's pretty popular in the kind of vinyl community, I guess you could say. And he, you know, has his opinions and he was explaining what he likes about vinyl records as opposed to other digital media, um, CDs, things like that. And he kind of brought up the point of like having a physical thing that you can pass on or have like tangible thing you can have. And, and I kind of get where he's coming from with regard to you have an MP3 player, you have everything on a cloud somewhere and you can access it anytime. But that's pretty much it. Like there's, there's no other experience involved with downloading an album and that's it. And then I started getting into like, how can I make this sound the best on my setup? And I realized that you start learning about like sound acoustics, sound quality and how sound bounces and how audio works, just wavelengths and uh, acoustic qualities, things like that. And that's what kind of got me thinking, okay, 
let me start putting some money into these little things. Obviously, I'm not going to spend thousands or tens of thousands of dollars on a setup, but I can drop a few hundred here, drop a few hundred there, get some decent speakers, get some really good speaker wire, and then just make this setup as good as I can make it. I'll link the video that actually talked about the sound, like what got me thinking about all this, and I'll put it in the description down below. It's really cool. And just kind of talks about your setup in your room, if you have carpet, glass, uh, just the distancing of things, really cool. And what changed my experience and my mind with vinyl records is I finally got a decent turntable. I wanted a Riga. I really wanted a nice Riga turntable. I think it was like RP3 or something like that. Um, but I couldn't convince my wife into dropping, you know, $1,300 or whatever it was <laughs> for that record player. Um, I really wanted it though. But anyway, what I ended up getting was this Audio Technica AT120 USB, I think is the, the model number. I'll put link it down below. But I got this Audio Technica turntable. Um, it is direct drive and so I don't have to worry about the belts or anything like that. The trade-off there is you get a little bit of, of noise when there's silence on the, the record. You hear a little bit of that motor um, come through the record but as far as you know once there's music playing you don't notice it, you can't hear it. So that was kind of the sacrifice that I made as opposed to going with a belt drive system. I learned about like the importance of wiring, I, you know, conditioning your, your electronics as far as having a power source conditioner um, to kind of clean that signal up. Everything that has any type of interference and that causes static is gonna be a problem with your records, dust. I learned all about that. So I just, I, I dove in, I embraced it. And I finally dropped some money on a really good stylus. I started learning about azimuth um, settings and how you have your stylus pointed, if it's leveled, all these little kind of intricate things that I really just got into. It was, it was really cool to me. And hearing the difference in sound between one you know, cartridge versus another, it wasn't until I put on this one record. And no joke, I only have two, two speakers, right? Left and right audio. And I have them positioned in the right way in the right setting. And when this record was playing, I can hear the sounds coming from left and right, of course, but I could also hear sounds and the singer and it, it the weirdest effect, I could, it sounded like it was coming directly in front of me. Like I know the speakers are here, but I'm hearing sound that's like coming from straight ahead. And it's kind of hard to describe. But I guess like the presence of the music was there in the room, the spatial distancing and everything. It's just this weird effect. I'll never forget it. And I realized like, okay, this is why these people are so into vinyl records. Like now I get it because there's stuff that you get that you can experience with a record that you probably can't get with digital no matter how much money you throw into your, your system, your setup. And that is what got me going into it. And man, once it got to that point, I was like, all right, now my journey is gonna consist of what kind of records do I wanna collect? And so I started thinking about it and everyone has pretty much people that are into records, they're gonna have the same albums. They're gonna have Pink Floyd, they're gonna have Led Zeppelin, they're gonna have all of these like iconic records you know, if they're into rock or whatever it may be. And they're gonna have like these specific records for different genres. And I get it, cause they're popular. Like it's for a reason. But I wanted to go a different route and I wanted to find these kind of obscure, maybe less known artists, records that um, were really cool, great music, stuff that I could enjoy, but maybe not everyone has in their collection. And so that's kind of the route that I took. And if you look at my record collection, which I'll do on another video someday, I'll talk about my favorites and some and how I came across them. Really cool stuff. And if you like vinyl, if you are into discovering new music and finding new stuff, then definitely check out my vinyl channel, which is called Vinyl Casual. So youtube.com slash vinyl casual. I'll link it down below as well. You can go check out some of those videos that I have um, and you can see my setup and kind of how it's progressed from early on and then what I have now. Give it a listen and let me know what you think because a lot of times when you think of records you think of like static popping clicking and for me i want to get the cleanest sound possible and then transfer that so other people can enjoy 
these kind of unknown artists that I've come across. So I just want to kind of share like, you know, records are one of those things that I got into. I've been slowly building up my collection. I'm always keeping an eye out for uh, records that I want to find. The kind of one that I think is the coolest set, it's actually a set of three records by a local group um, here in Texas from San Antonio called Girl in a Coma. And they had Adventures in Coverland. And so it's a three um, disc, 45s. There's three of them that they made and it's volume one, two, three. And basically they do cover songs of some really cool uh, tracks and finding, I could find one, I could find two, but I can never find all three. And the third, I think it's number three, the third volume was the one that was the hardest to get. And so rather than buying this one from this buyer or this seller and second one from a second and just keep an eye out for the third one and waiting and waiting, I found a guy on eBay that had all three mint condition, paid a nice little premium, but I got all three of them and they sound awesome. And I've actually put one of them on my vinyl casual channel. So check it out. Um, sorry for the lengthy rant. It's kind of vlog style, I guess you could say, but I just wanted to share with you guys or one of my interests in vinyl records. So let me know what you think. Do you think it's dumb? Do you love it? Do you have, you know, what's your collection like? I'd love to hear all about it. Let me know in the comments below. As always, like, comment, share, all that good stuff. Join the Schwartz Force if you haven't yet, and I'll see you guys at the next one. The nice review coming. Take care.